Welcome back to Old School Sports and another OOTP 24 tutorial video. And this one I promise you is going to be quick. Although if you're watching this video, you've already seen how long it ended up being. So hopefully I'm not making myself a liar at the start of this video. But what we're going to do today is just talk about kind of what I'm looking for defensively at each of the positions on the field. The minimum standards that I'd like to see among a starting player, as well as any other kind of thoughts I have on which aspects are most important, which are less important. This is going to be purely anecdotal. If you want a deep statistical analysis of all of the real facts and figures in OOTP, there are content providers like Sergeant Mushroom out there that have provided a much better analysis than I can. This is just basically my view based on a lot of experience playing in the game and kind of seeing what has worked and what has not worked as far as the defensive statistics that the teams have put put up for me over the years. And I think defense is an area that can tend to be ignored a bit. It's definitely important in OOTP definitely helps make your pitchers better. So if you've been struggling despite uh, having a pitching staff that you think is really good and a lineup as far as batting that you think it is really good, uh, perhaps not paying enough attention to getting players who are good defensively and have the characteristics that you need to excel at a position defensively is part of the problem. And to talk about what we're looking for at the different defensive positions, we're going to go through our recently started uh, playthrough in OOTP 24 of the New York Yankees. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, would definitely appreciate it if you check out those videos as well. And if you are a Yankees fan or a baseball fan, you may notice that our starting third baseman, Josh Donaldson, our starting shortstop, Oswald Peraza, and our starting second baseman, DJ LeMayhew, are all injured here in mid-July of 2023. But we can still talk about the players who have taken their places at this point. Uh, it's not going to change what we're looking for. It just means that right now we probably don't have the optimal lineup since uh, three of our infield starters are on the injured list right now. And it probably goes without saying, but for any position on the field, the better rating you can get there for range, throwing, error, turning double play, depending on which uh, rating you're looking at, the higher the number, the better. So uh, these are minimums, but certainly should never turn your nose up to a better defensive player than a adequate defensive player. So starting with catcher, which is a pretty critically important position, uh, Catcher ability to me is more important than catcher arm. Sergeant Mushroom has had some great materials on this over the years. It does seem compared to OOTP 22 that the importance of catcher ability was nerfed a bit in OOTP 23. Don't really have a good sense of uh, what it's like in OOTP 24 at all. But clearly a catcher like Jose Trevino with 80 catcher ability and 65 catcher arm is absolutely more than adequate. Um, I would love to have at a minimum 60 ability and a 50 arm. There are times when I can't get that, uh, but I'd say that 60 ability and 50 arm is kind of the minimum I'm looking for. In an ideal world, I'd kind of like them to be both, both a little bit higher. Uh, 65 to 70 ability for a catcher, start feeling pretty good about where we are. And certainly if the arm can be getting up into the 55 or 60 range, I'm feeling good about that, that as well. So certainly here we have excellent defensive uh, catching with Trevino as our starter. And then right now Jake Rogers is our backup. And you can see he's got a gun for an arm with 75 and as our backup still has a 60 catcher ability, a little bit of home run power. So a pretty good combination defensively of our catchers here on the Yankees in 2023. Turning to first base uh, is important as defense is to me. 
if there is a position on the field that I am willing to stick somebody who is well below average, first base certainly qualifies for that. Obviously, with the DH in both leagues now, there's one option to get rid of your worst defensive player rather than sticking him at first. But first base still generally ends up with people that aren't all that proficient defensively. And if you've got somebody with a good bat uh, who's not that great a defensive player and you've got to play him at first base, there are certainly worse situations than that. Uh, it's important to have somebody tall at first base. Uh, that helps them with their reach. Um, and potentially uh, handling off-target throws and whatnot. So certainly somebody who's 6'3", like Anthony Rizzo, is a good size there, but the taller, the better. And then as far as range, error, arm, and turn double play, uh, range and error would be somewhat more important than arm and double play uh, generally, you know, except for the rare 363 kind of double plays. Uh, you're not going to have to do a lot with your arm and it's going to be a uh, pretty rare situation where the first baseman is actually in the midst of turning a double play. So if you've got 50s on infield range and infield error and 40s for infield arm and turn double play, I think that's more than fine. Obviously, you would prefer to have a Keith Hernandez or a Don Mattingly, who is an exceptional or who were exceptional defensive first baseman back in the day uh, at first base, if at all possible, you know, a player with a great glove and a great bat. But, uh, you know, if you're 50, 50, 40, 40, I think you're fine. And quite honestly, you can see here, I've got a first base and with the Yankees whose range is lower than optimal and turn double play is lower than optimal. And at this point in his career, Rizzo is not an exceptional bat, but I have uh, no problem with a player like that being out there. I think if you start getting to the point where somebody is in the 30s and 20s for all of their ratings, that's definitely a natural DH and someone that you may want to be reticent to put at first, particularly if they're not at least 6'2 or 6'3 tall. And next up is second base, where we have the great, hopefully, youngster Anthony Volpe, who's the number six prospect in baseball right now. Uh, second base, everything is important. Uh, honestly, Volpe's rating 60, 60, 50, 55 are kind of near the minimum that I would like for this position. I think that Volpe is going to end up being a second baseman for the Yankees. Uh, to me, these ratings are not high enough to play him at th at shortstop and I'd prefer a third baseman with a better arm. So I think these ratings are sufficient particularly because if his bat completely develops he's going to be a pretty good offensive player. But in a perfect world I'd want to have at least a 65 range and a 65 error. Uh, kind of fine with a 50 infield arm and uh, would like to get that. And then turn double play for a second baseman is pretty important. Would love that rating to be at least 65 also. So I'd say the minimum that I'd be looking for here in a ideal scenario to build a really good defensive team would be 65, 65, 50, 65. You can see that Volpe's uh, 5 or 10 points below on some of those categories. It is what he is. He's still above average for an infielder in terms of his range, error, and even his turn double play ratings. Uh, but if he did not have uh, a bat that I think could potentially be an above average major league bat, I would be more concerned about playing him at that position. Uh, infield arm is an area where you can get away with a little bit at second base. Personally, I don't like to go below 45. I know that there definitely are second basemen out there in the game who get down to 40, even 35 in terms of their arm ratings. It is such a short throw typically between second and first that it's not necessarily critical. Uh, but I probably... I'm a little more conservative than others in not wanting to dip down into the 40s for the arm of my second baseman, if at all possible. Turning to shortstop, where we've got uh, JT Riddle, who we picked up as a minor league free agent signing less than two months ago, and now he is the uh, starting shortstop for the New York Yankees, because in addition to 
Oswald Peraza, as I mentioned, uh, being out with an injury, and our second baseman, DJ LeMayhew, being out with injury. Uh, Oswaldo Cabrera, who's also a utility infielder for us, is hurt right now, so uh, that has pushed Riddle into action recently. Uh, I'd say that the numbers I'm looking for here are similar to second base, but I generally want them to be better. As a minimum, I'd want 65 for range. If I can get a 70, I feel much better about it. Uh, would want a 65 as a minimum for error in a ideal situation and would prefer it to be 70. Infield arm, I'd want to be at least a 60 and would prefer it if it was more like a 65. Turning double play, not as critical to me as second base. I think 60 is kind of the minimum I'm looking for here. But again, uh, there are those... Uh, potential double plays where the ball is hit to the right side of the infield and the first baseman or the second baseman is going to be getting it to the shortstop and he's going to have to make the turn. Uh, so it definitely is an important aspect, not as frequent as it would be for a second baseman in most situations. So I feel you can get away with a little lower here, 60, uh, but I'd feel like uh, 65 would make me feel better uh, about the defensive nature of my Shortstop. So I'd say as a minimum, I'm looking for 65, 65, 65, and 60. In third base is definitely not as critical a position in terms of the number of opportunities you're going to get as shortstop or second base in the infield. Uh, still definitely need higher quality here typically than you will need at first base. Uh, Trey Sweeney is okay. Um, range of 55 is kind of fine. Obviously, as I've said earlier, I'd love everyone to have 70s and 80s for every category, but I could live with somebody at a 55 range at third base. Would prefer it be 60, but if it's 55, um, I'm okay with it. And quite honestly, if it's 50, I'll live with it if the rest of their traits are pretty strong. Infield error, want to be as good as possible. I'd say 60 here is, is kind of a good minimum for building a solid defensive team. Infield arm, we're a little light. Would certainly like that to be at least a 65. You know, can you live with a 60? Sure. But I'd like it better if it was 65 or 70. Turn double play, not necessarily critical. 55 is more than sufficient. Quite honestly, if a third baseman has... 40 45 but they are at the standards i want for the others so 60 60 65 i could live with somebody with a 40 45 for turning the double play uh, probably can even live with someone with a 35 down there although it's certainly not optimal moving on to left field uh depends on the park that you're playing in but besides first base, uh, left field is a relatively common position to try to hide someone who's not a particularly adept defensive player. If you're playing in a huge park like Coors, that could be a very, very poor decision. And just as a plug for Coors, if you're interested in playing with a team in Colorado and seeing some ideas that work and don't work in that massive ballpark that is... Uh, Tends to give up a ton of extra base hits and a ton of home runs. Uh, recently completed in OOTP 23, a Colorado Rockies playthrough that you can find on the channel if you're interested in uh, how to build a team that ultimately was pretty successful in cores. But outside of parks like that, as I said, left field is a position where you can hide somebody if you need to. In a perfect world, I'd like at least 55 range, 55 error and 55 arm out there but you definitely don't need that if you've got someone with a really good home run bat like Giancarlo Stanton for example you see that I've got him out there with a 40 range a 45 error and a 60 arm definitely not ideal and uh, the right field area or the sorry the left field area in uh, Yankee Stadium is pretty large also so this is not an ideal situation I'd certainly love it if we had another 10 points of range and another 5 points of error with Stanton and he was at least 50-50, kind of a 
average major leaguer in both of those categories, but sometimes you need to make trade-offs. But in a perfect world, I'd love it if all three of those scores were, were 50 or above. And of course, as always, the higher the better. Moving on to center field and Harrison Bader. Uh, this is an area where you're going to want some excellent range and error ratings, if at all possible. Uh, you want that range to kind of be able to track down balls right at the center field or uh, where he needs to run in or run back, and then also to his left and to his right to help his right and left fielders. So range is going to be critical. Uh, I can live with a 60 if I have to, if it's a player who is really dynamic offensively. I can live with a 65 um, if I need to, but in a perfect world, you'd love to have a center fielder with a 70 range, anything below 60, and um, you probably want to keep your eye out for a defensive upgrade. Uh, outfield error, want it as high as possible, certainly would prefer that it be 60 or above, uh, which we've got in this case. And then outfield arm, honestly, I'm a little probably a little less uh, strenuous on this than some people are. Uh, if I get a 50, 55 arm, but it's somebody who's 70s plus in both range and error, I can definitely live with that in center field. Quite honestly, if I had somebody who was 70, 70, I'd be willing to live with an arm as low as a 40 or 45 if I felt like they were the best option for me offensively because that 70 range and that 70 error they're going to make a lot of plays out there um, there will be times when their arm is tested and a weak arm isn't going to help you but to me the uh, range and error ratings particularly for center field are are much more important than the arm but in a perfect world you want somebody like Bader who's a uh, 70 65 70 or better and uh, kind of giving you well above average outfield skills in all three of the defensive aspects for center field. And last but not least is uh, right field. Uh, honestly, this is going to be similar to left field in that depending on your park dynamics, you can hide somebody here who doesn't necessarily have the greatest range and error ratings depending on the size of your ballpark. Uh, certainly would prefer that the range and error ratings both be 50 or above. So a range of 60 to me is is fine. You know, if you've got a 60 right fielder, you can feel pretty good about it. Error rating of 55, obviously prefer higher than that in a perfect world, but I think it's still more than sufficient. And then obviously for those of you who know baseball well, which if you're this far into the, idea, uh, the video probably uh, means you fit the bill, Traditionally, you want a bigger arm in right field than in left field uh, because you might be making those throws to third base from right field, and it's a much longer throw from right field to third than it is from left field to third, typically, depending on where you are in the outfield, obviously. So I would like to have at least a 60, 65 as a minimum for an arm. So Judge is clearly a very solid defensive center fielder. Uh, 60, 55, 75, I can't complain. I think he kind of uh, checks all the boxes that I'm looking for in terms of a defensive right fielder. But wait, you say, there's one more position, pitchers. And pitchers in the game do not have uh, specific ratings for error and range and arm. Uh, presumably they all have pretty good arms because they are pitchers, but there is just one general pitcher position rating. Uh, and there's not a ton of variability in that. Um, and honestly, I don't pay. Well, there's not a ton of variability in that on my Yankees team here. You can see we've got uh, fielding from 45 up to 70 for all of the pitchers on the team. So there's no one that you know stands out as an incredible defensive uh, pitcher with a 75 or 80 rating, but there's also nobody who's below 45 either. Uh, the other thing to think about with pitchers from a defensive perspective, though, is their hold rating, and uh, that may be something that's ignored a little bit. Honestly, the fielding rating for pitchers, I generally don't pay attention to. 
I can't think of over the years if I've had pitchers who have had 25s or 30s or 35s, but it would be a extremely unique situation involving probably the the last arm in my bullpen where I would make a decision to have somebody out on the roster or not um, based simply on their fielding. I think if a pitcher is a great pitcher, you'll deal with the fact that he's not particularly adept on the handful of chances that he might have over, over the course of a typical nine innings. Hold rating, though, uh, can be more significant, particularly if you're playing in an era where uh, steals are more common than they are in 2023 baseball, or you just happen to be playing against a team with a lot of uh, fast players who tend to uh, challenge the pitcher, take big leads, and try to steal bases. And uh, the hold rating can definitely be critical in terms of the ultimate success rate in um, potential base runners against you, either in terms of uh, keeping people close so they can't uh, steal bases and uh, picking off runners and, and those kind of things. And there's obviously more than the hold rating that feeds into those if you are to look at all of the algorithms of OOTP, not going to get into those details there, but particularly uh, when I'm thinking about a potential closer or relievers who could be coming on and inheriting runners on base, again, it's not going to be a critical rating for me, but I probably look at the hold rating more often than I look at the actual fielding rating when I'm thinking about these pitchers and how they contribute to the team defensively. So again, I'm not going to cut a pitcher or not have a pitcher on my team just because they have a poor hold rating. Uh, clearly, Garrett Cole is one of the aces of this staff of this Yankees team, although it does look like his uh, movement is definitely regressing here as he closes in on 33 years old. Uh, but the fact that he has a pretty low hold rating uh, isn't going to keep him from being my pitcher uh, in the rotation for the next several years, most likely. Now, when he's 37, 38 years old, and his skills are less than they are today, if he's in a battle with somebody for a fifth spot on our pitching staff and their pitching abilities are pretty even, their velocity is pretty even, they both have the stamina to start, and one of them's horrible at holding runners and the other one really excels at it, that could be a tiebreaker in a rare situation. So I would think about hold and um, fielding ratings as the way, um, you know, think about those as tiebreakers. I wouldn't make critical decisions about who's going to be in your rotation and your bullpen based on those. But if you get into a situation where everything else is even, then maybe those could help be a tiebreaker for you. And with that, I think we're done. Those are the positions in baseball on a baseball field, and we've talked about all of them right now. Obviously, you don't need to worry about defense for your designated hitter. And uh, when you're thinking about defense for your utility infielders and your utility outfielders, you know, players who are in the 60s at most of the infield positions or players who are in the 50s at least for most of the outfield uh, ratings are, are probably decent options to use as utility outfielders. Uh, certainly, you'd prefer that you're backup center fielder in a perfect world have a range in the 60s but sometimes as you are trying to build a squad uh, particularly if you're under budgetary constraints as most teams are you have to make some sacrifices i uh, would love to hear your thoughts about what you look for in defensive uh, characteristics of your players down below if you think i'm way off on something please let me let me know about that as well and uh, we'll be back at some point in the future with another tutorial video. Until then, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.